This is Dr. Fauci, the former chief medical advisor to the president. And this is Betty, a UCLA sophomore who is one of the most competitive pre-meds I have ever seen. Betty is part of our Pre-Med Catalyst mentorship program, and before we started, her resume really just featured an EKG club that she joined for good clinical experience. But in reality, she and Dr. Fauci are both passionate about infectious diseases. Today, months after working with our team, her resume looks completely different. Multiple basic and clinical research labs and publications shadowed multiple hospitals and clinics abroad specializing in global infectious diseases, leadership positions in street medicine clinics as an outreach coordinator, and working directly to link unhoused individuals with HIV testing and resources. She has built such an impactful, cohesive narrative and will likely be competitive for nearly every medical school she applies to. Today, I'll show you the four simple steps that any pre-med can take today to earn the extracurricular activities that will stand out to your dream medical schools. We'll personally hand you a word-for-word -word, plug and play email template you can use right now. Betty used this herself to get responses from the busiest professors, doctors, and PIs, ultimately leading to a Q&A with Dr. Fauci. If you're new here, I'm Mike. I'm an anesthesiology resident in New York City, and I'm the co-founder of Pre-Med Catalyst. I graduated from UCLA undergrad and trained at UCLA Medical School. And over the last seven years, I've been helping hundreds of pre-med students like yourself get into their dream medical schools. But more on us later. If you're looking for research, shadowing, or clinical experiences, and the professors, doctors, and PIs just aren't responding, your emails just may need a little bit of work. You can access these word-for-word -word email templates completely free. The link is in our bio below. These word-for-word -word email templates are proven. Betty, in fact, used many of these. 70% of these emails get responses, even from the busiest of people, and have helped our very own students get the experiences of their dreams. Again, always free, link in our bio. Standing out can be boiled down to one simple tenant. Do adcoms remember you? And one easy way that we at Pre-Med Catalyst assess this is the, oh, that's the Pre-Med Who distillation test. For example, oh, Steve, that's the Pre-Med Who managed a computer lab to help incarcerated individuals earn college degrees so that when they finish their time, they could re-enter society with skills and job opportunities. If we look at Betty's resume before, the problem will become immediately apparent. Her resume does not actually convey her genuine interests. For Betty specifically, her resume said that she was interested in things like leukemia and lymphoma cancer research, congenital heart disease given her EKG screening in young children, and possibly global infectious disease given a poster on tuberculosis in Uganda. Competitiveness score, I would put this resume in between a level zero to one. So somewhere between zero and 25 because there's a bunch of basic extracurricular activities, but no clear theme has emerged. Now, after working with Betty for three months, you can see that her resume drastically changed in that time. It is now very representative of her interests in infectious disease, and she's beginning to build real mastery and have serious impacts as evidenced by the opportunities in leadership that she is beginning to earn. Now, this resume screams infectious disease, and it is very clear who medical schools are going to get. Oh yeah, 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 Betty, Betty, Betty. That's the pre-med who published a first author paper on monkeypox genome sequencing as a sophomore does clinical research with Vietnam veterans looking at the comorbidity of cirrhosis after hepatitis C, is leading a literature review on hepatitis B HIV co-infection across Africa, leads a street medicine team and partners with the LA Department of Public Health to roll out an HIV self-testing program, and that pre-med who spent an hour learning directly from Dr. Fauci and from Dr. Hotez, another Nobel Prize nominee. This has gone from a 20-ish competitiveness score and jumped drastically to an 80-85 level 3 resume with a cohesive theme and substantial levels of impact. Now, how did she build a profile of such impressive extracurricular activities? She did it in four simple steps. Step one is to find people. Find people, PIs, professors, 
people who are also interested in the same things that you are. And the key concept for step one is what we call the fishing hole framework. Trying to find the people, this is a fish, the people who fish at the same spot that you do. So this is our key fish. It may be infectious disease, community health, basic science research about Alzheimer's, and anyone who is interested in this subject will put their fishing rods into this same hole. So you may find a basic science researcher, a community health advocate, a public policy person, or a doctor who specializes in that condition. Let's say you're interested in weight loss. What professional would also be interested in weight loss? Well, you may find people who are basic science researchers who study hunger hormones, for example. Of course, you have specialist physicians like endocrinologists or bariatric surgeons who also help deal with weight loss. Then you have some tech companies, think kind of like your Fitbits, your Stravas, your Nikes, other companies that are also interested in weight loss. In addition to these professionals, psychiatrists also work with people who may be struggling from weight uh, in bulimia or anorexia nervosa. And there may be more hobbyist organizations like Koreatown Run Club or physical therapists for the community that also help people lose weight. The point here is that if you're interested in something like weight loss, there are basic science researchers, doctors, professors from the School of Public Health, professors from the School of Social Welfare that will also be working on projects in that same field. The goal during this step is to find as many people as possible. And for our pre-meds in our mentorship program, we recommend anywhere from 50 to 75 total individuals to put on your list of outreach. And now once you've built a wide list of people that you could potentially work with, step two is to prioritize people that you would like to work with. Prioritize. During this step, you're looking to filter that list of 50 to 75 total emails to the 12, 15, 20 PIs, organizations, doctors that you'd really like to work with, shadow, or get to know. We call this our tier one list. And once you have that, step three is to begin writing high quality emails to this tier one list. And I want you to remember the value that you have during this stage of your training. It's not having some specific skill set like being able to pipette gracefully. Anyone can teach anyone to do that. It's not having passed some specific class like organic chemistry lab because those skills aren't really relevant. And it's certainly not having some silly certification like human CD training for human subjects because that stuff you can complete in 30 minutes. The value you bring to a lab or a doctor or a professor is proactivity. As demonstrated by sending a well-researched email that read through their entire website, has a good sense of their recent publications, and knows exactly what that lab cares about. is being observant and showing that you're willing to do whatever it takes, like noticing that the lab does not have an official website yet and creating a simple wireframe mockup to show the PI. For example, here's a screenshot of an email that one of our students sent sharing that they actually wrote a blog article on Dr. Maimondi's work and wanted Dr. Maimondi to read about it. That is proactivity, that is being observant, that is getting the job done before it's asked for. At this stage, it is proactivity and being observant and not skills, classes, or certifications. Proactivity and being observant will get you a higher quality email and show the professor or doctor that you'll be an asset leaning on your skills, classes, or some random nonsense certification will be meaningless to these professors. Our fourth and final step in this process is following up, specifically following up three times over three weeks. The key here is understanding that following up is actually respectful. It's not annoying or disruptive. These faculty members get hundreds of emails in their inbox every single morning, and following up is another way to demonstrate your proactivity, your interest in the position or the lab, and it is the best way to catch the attention of a PI you're demonstrating interest in. 
four simple steps. Finding people using our fishing hole framework, prioritizing your tier one candidates, beginning to write high quality emails based on curiosity, proactivity, and observation. You can use our word for word email templates to help. And fourthly, following up three times over three weeks to show people that you actually care about the position. All right, I showed you Betty's application before and after and how those specific extracurricular activities raised her competitiveness score drastically. I also gave you step-by-step -step instructions that we personally guided Betty through so that she could earn these extracurricular activities. In addition, I gave you the same word-for-word -word email templates that Betty herself used to land these very extracurricular activities. It's yours always for free in the link in bio. And if you found Betty's case study helpful, you may find the Pre-Med Catalyst Mentorship Program also helpful. This is the mentorship that started our entire company, Pre-Med Catalyst. Betty is one of our fantastic students and we're so happy that she now has full control over her pre-med journey. She's figured out her theme and she's built a cohesive, impactful application. When she had questions about whether to do extracurricular A or extracurricular B or how to land that extracurricular activity, her village of mentors, her personal support system was able to add clarity to what the right decision was for her journey. If you think you may at all be interested, our sign up call is always free to learn more about the program. It's available in the link in our description box below. And if you liked this video, you'll love this video here where we talk about a pre-med who's in the complete opposite situation. Her resume had a 0% chance of getting into any medical school. By reviewing Nancy's application, we show you exactly how to grade your current application and how to figure out what the right next steps are for you. That video is here and I'll see you there.